and 11. Rain or shine. Waynesboro has fun, y'all.
or in person, your choice. So far, there's already a 12% increase in enrollment for cybersecurity courses. We have a host of different types of businesses coming in, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's cyber, whether it's food distribution. When you look at all of those, there's always a cyber threat. There's always a need to protect those companies as they come into this state and this nation. And we're proud to have the workforce coming through our system and USG to really provide that benefit to our industries across this state. This partnership includes Augusta Tech along with 22 other technical colleges. Augusta's Marble Palace could be a marble menace. There are more than a thousand marble panels on the 66-year-old building. After one came loose, the city brought in engineers to conduct an evaluation. Their report concludes a reasonable scenario exists where a marble panel could fall from the structure. The report recommends a full inspection, including x-raying all of the panels. Panels are throughout the entire building, um, but I, I believe that uh, whatever maintenance is required, we should perform. Whatever inspection is required, we should perform. This is the people's building, and uh, people that come here uh, should be able to do so safely without fear of a panel falling on them. Yeah, and estimates say the inspection of the marble panels could cost $200,000. Commissioners are expected to make a decision next week. Mm. Tell you what, panel would fall on you only once, though. Goodness forbid. A local park will soon be home to a fun water activity. What a great addition, potentially, for our friends in Barnwell, as Graham Lee reports. Summertime is just around the corner, which means it's time to get back on the water. City and county leaders here in Barnwell are teaming up to bring kayaking to Lake Edgar Brown. The city was approached by a Michigan-based company called Rent Fund six months ago about the project, and it caught their attention. It looked like it was very interesting and had quite a bit of potential, so we were... Uh, quite intrigued by it, and I thought it was a, a great idea and a good company to work with. The city and county are now splitting an $18,000 investment to install a storage cage with 10-foot kayaks, paddles, and life vests at Kilkenny Park. Robert says the city will maintain the park while the county will install a concrete pad and ramp to access the lake. And then Rent Fund actually handles the maintenance of the unit. So it's totally turnkey. We don't have to do any sort of maintenance ourselves. And if there's any damage or anything to it, then Red Fund takes care of that as part of their, their part. Last month, the Bardwell City Council unanimously approved moving forward with the project. County leaders say this is a great opportunity for the community to get more use out of Kilkenny Park and the lake. But it'll also draw people from other places into Barmel, help with tourism, help with revenue, and also show people that Barmel's a lot bigger than what people think it is. I think a collaborative project just shows people that the city and county are willing to work together and that uh, we have the citizens' best interest. Robert says the city is hoping that everything will be installed by April 2025. In Barnwell County, Graham Lee, WJBF, News Channel 6. Augusta Tech is expanding its auto institute, and local car dealerships are offering their support. Master Automotive donated $500,000 to help renovate the facility at the old Johnson Cadillac dealership on Walton Way. Once the $25 million renovation is complete, the 65,000-square-foot building will be the first of its kind in the nation. Students will get hands-on experience because people will be able to take their vehicles there to have minor work done. Construction begins in October, and it is expected to be complete in late 2025. Cars are getting more technical. It, it, it is a very highly technical skilled job that these technicians do for us anymore these days and it's just very very hard to find folks that are qualified to do it when i heard about what augusta tech was doing we we wanted to be involved with it you may remember jim hudson automotive has already pledged a million dollars to help augusta tech's automotive program get off the ground piedmont augusta reopening its somerville hospital campus that's on wrightsboro road and they used it for covid patients during the pandemic but then the emergency room and inpatient rooms were shut down after the peak of the pandemic passed. Well, now Piedmont has renovated the 15 ER beds and a 12-bed inpatient unit, including a new radiology equipment section, a new MRI coming this summer. 
The new unit opens May 16th, and the Somerville campus also home to Augusta Tech's School of Allied Health. So they're going to be busy there. Happening tonight, it is graduation season in the CSRA. USC Aiken will hold its commitment ceremony, or commencement ceremony, I should say, tonight. It's being held at the Convocation Center. Starting at 6 p.m., the doors open at 5. State Senator Shane Massey will be the commencement speaker. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office mourning the loss of a deputy tonight. The Sheriff's Office confirming Corporal Todd Kitchens died in his sleep at his home Monday night. Kitchens worked with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office since December of 2007. He was promoted to corporal in 2017 and was assigned to the jail division. He was 55. Knew it for a years-long effort to remove feminine hygiene products from being taxed passed into law today with a signature from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. This comes after a unanimous vote yesterday in the Senate. The House also voted in favor 114 to 0 back in April of 2023. Before today's decision, South Carolina was among 21 states that had added a tax to menstrual products. Revenue projections estimate the state will lose $7.3 million from its tax fund once the tax is removed. The CDC issuing a food safety alert after a multi-state outbreak of E. coli infections. It's been linked to organic walnuts sold in California and Washington. They were purchased from bulk bins in natural food stores or food co-ops. Supplier Gibson Farms has now recalled the products. The CDC says 12 people have been infected, 7 needed to go to the hospital. An influential panel of experts now recommending women start breast screenings at a younger age. Rebecca Jarvis takes a look at what age the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force proposes. The U.S. Preventative Services Task Force announcing their final recommendation on screening for breast cancer, suggesting all women with average risk begin screening with mammograms at the age of 40 and continue every other year until the age of 74. The latest science clearly shows that by screening every other year beginning at age 40, that we can save even more lives. In fact, up to nearly 20% more lives can be saved from breast cancer. Prior recommendations from the task force said women should start screening no later than age 50, but more women are being diagnosed with breast cancer at younger ages. The national data showed that since from 2015 to 2019, there was an increase in breast cancer diagnoses in women ages 40 to 49, and in fact it increased about 2% every year. Olga Arcila says a mammogram at 45 saved her life. They told me that I have breast cancer. I couldn't believe it. I am a very healthy person, very active, very positive. Following a double mastectomy and 16 rounds of chemotherapy, she's now helping her Latin community stay informed about the importance of mammograms. Very important to start at the age of 40. But if the cancer is in your family, you have to do it earlier. A large portion of Atlanta Braves fans will not be able to watch the team thanks to a TV rights dispute. It's true. Diamond Sports, which operates Valley Sports, the TV home of the Braves, is in a carriage dispute with Xfinity. The Valley Sports blackout for Comcast customers took effect this morning. That's not good. The Braves say other cable providers and streaming services that typically carry the team, though, are not impacted here. And there's always the radio and online. Coming up, Georgia State leaders proposing new changes to improve your access to the canal into green space. A closer look at the plans and when construction may begin next. It's time for shorts and flip-flops. I'll have the warm forecast coming up. Headlines on WGBF News Channel 6, brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. A serious accident creates a lot of right now problems. You're worried about your injuries, the medical bills, and whether you'll get stuck paying for it all. You shouldn't have to chase after a lawyer to get the help you need. With me, you won't have to. I'm Austin Jackson, your guy in Augusta. If you've been injured, my team will get to work right away. And you don't have to pay us anything unless we get money for you. Injured? Call Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy. 
706-724-7224. Transform. Nice. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Oh, I just love this. In a unique nod to the Kentucky Derby festivities, Panera Bread has introduced a new fashion accessory bound to turn heads at Churchill Downs. It's called the Bread Hat, and it's designed to look just like their famous bread bowl with colorful ostrich feathers around uh, it. And it is about 21 bucks, but you'll have to wait to place your order. The first round of hats sold out in the first day. Waiting and Panera. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's worth it. 100% worth it. And that is it for this half hour, but we have more coming up on News Channel 6 at 4.30. Including violence and tensions escalating at colleges.